everybody, this is Birch, and uh, this is a video that I think is going to be tough. Uh, tough to make, tough to listen to, tough to read the comments on, tough all around. So uh, let's get to this viewer question, because uh, first off, uh, I, I have to hand it to you, the balls to write in and uh, ask this question. I, actually, I don't, I don't think it necessarily takes balls or courage or whatever it happens to be, but I mean, I, I like bluntness. I, I want to explain something about, about me that I think a lot of people do not get. I think my wife knows this. I mean, she should. She knows me very well. But it took a long time for her to get it, too. Um, I prefer bluntness. I, I prefer directness. Um, in my head, and I wish I wasn't this way, there's like this invisible ticking clock that I hear. Kind of like, like uh, what, Captain Hook, right? Um, I am like Captain Hook. Great. Um, but there's this, like, there's this ticking clock. And the clock basically uh, lets me know that uh, time is passing. And if I'm not doing something, if I'm not moving stuff forward, um, it's like tick, 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 tick. It, it's, it's, it's agonizing. Um, I wish I, I am impatient. I wish I wasn't. Um, if I was more patient, if I was just a little bit better, I'd be a, I would be an actual artist. Um, I'd have better videos because I'd put in the time, you know, to make them great and everything else. But no, I'm in a hurry most of the time. Everything I do, I rush through so I can get to something else. That, that was in some book, and it's it fits me to a T. So I appreciate questions like this one, which don't uh, beat around the bush and get to the heart of it. So here is the question. Hey, Perch, I love your show. I hate your comments. When I see the comments to your videos, I cringe. I often think I'm in the wrong place because, put it bluntly, a lot of people in the comments sound like absolute, I'm going to say it, racists. When I look at your video for Daniel Cherry, I see people coming in and trashing Daniel Cherry with such anger and such glee. It's hard not to see more than just a simple dislike. You do not see the same kind of comments on other videos. Even people like Dan Slott get a lot of anger for comic fans, but not even close to the vitriol that came out with somebody like Cherry, which is strange because Cherry did nearly nothing. What has he done to earn hatred or likes? This is a, this is a rough mail, right? Anyway, sorry, it continues. I decided to write in when I saw your Jim Lee video where you talked about why aren't people attacking him with the same fever. You speculated it has something to do with the fact that Jim Lee uh, was an artist. My speculation is that Jim Lee is not black. When you go down the list of people that get the most extreme reactions on YouTube, it is magically Vita Ayala, Daniel Cherry, other people of color, other black people. Now, I want to make this very clear. I hate Vita Ayala's writing with an absolute passion. I think Vita is terrible, and she shouldn't be. Oh, you should. She said she. Uh, she shouldn't be writing comments, comics. However, I don't think all the people who go after her are reading those comics, and I don't think they're going after her for the same reason. What do you think? Give me your honest answer. Okay. Okay. Well, first of all, I think, uh, well, you're clearly a bigot because Vita's pronouns are they. Um, they, them. Um, anyway, uh, I, I, I jest. And when I jest, by the way, um, it's, it's not about a disrespect for pronouns, what people want to be called. I think my stance has been, continues to be, will always be, you tell me what to call you and I will try, I will do, I will call you that. I don't care. I really don't. It's, it's not me. It's you. So you, whatever you want to pick, it's your business. That's what I'll try and do. I've also said, and I, I admit this is all my problem. It's not yours. It's not anyone else's. When you're switching between, you know, he, him, she, her to plural, you know, they, um, that is tough for my, you know, primitive brain to wrap its head around going from a singular to a, to a plural is tough in this context. I've got to I've got to give over over forty years of wiring to, uh, to to wrap my head around that, and it's 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 not it's not easy. So again, not your fault, mine, but I'm going to slip up on that one, and I do. But generally, my stance is I'll call you whatever you want. 
But now I'm just ducking the original question. Do I think a lot of people are uh, racist who make these comments? Um, no, I don't. Uh, do I think that there are some racists in there? Uh, sure. I, I, I have no doubt that there's some racists in there because, I, I mean, look, let's be honest. There, there's, there's people who are racist everywhere. And racism is, is it, it goes in all directions. It is not just white people against black people. It's black people against Asian people. It's Hispanic people against, I, I don't know, uh, Indian people. It's Indian people against Asian people. It's Chinese people against Japanese people. I mean, good Lord, if you want to, if you want to see some extreme racism, go check out that little dynamic, the old uh, China, Japan, Korea dynamic. That's a, uh, that's a hell of a thing. If you think that uh, we, you know, there's there's comments that fly around in the U.S., you have no idea unless you've been over there. But absolutely, there are racists everywhere, and I, I think I, I, you asked for an honest answer. I'm going to give you an honest uh, answer, um, no, no matter what people think of it. I think there's there's uh, you know two types of racism. I, I'm boiling it down. There's probably a lot of nuance uh, to racism for sure. I think there's uh, racism that is uh, built on kind of ignorance and is relatively benign. Not good. Not good. Didn't say it was good. Just, you know, it's the, you know, you, you, I'm sure a lot of you have it. Okay. But let's be honest. You have the 80 year old grandparent who says uncomfortable things on Thanksgiving dinner and, you know, not good. You know, you're embarrassed. You want, you, you, you know, I, I don't know if you've had this experience. You wander into like Home Depot and you, you know, you see her, your grandpa making eyes at uh, someone, you're like, oh crap! Please don't say anything. Please don't. We're just gonna. We do, we need to pick up the drill bit and get out of here. Can we do? Please don't say anything. And fortunately, you know, the grandfather's not a, a you know complete idiot. He keeps his mouth shut, but you can know what's going on in his mind. And you're you're. I don't want to say disgusted by it, but yeah, well, maybe that's the right word. I I don't know. It just I feel like people do things over the top. Um, I don't feel that way. So I and I don't. I always feel it as a sign of ignorance. That's how it feels to me. Like the person is ignorant. Uh, who's who's doing that? They've had some experience, some idea that settled into their life that they can't let go of, and it's impacting the way they they go through life. And then I think there's a a deeper level of racism, a racism that people act upon. Now, in my view, and I know I'm at odds with a lot of people when I say this, uh, I I think that most people fall into that first camp, not the second camp. People who have racist feelings in their heart, their mind. I think most of them are just carrying this stuff around, maybe an angry maybe grumbling, but they're not actively doing things. And I also, and, and this is where a lot of you are going to laugh at me, okay? But in my heart, I believe that the majority of people in the world, if they see someone who needs help, if there's, if there's somebody you know, stranded on the road, they're in danger, they need help, most people will help. Regardless of skin color or anything else, most people Will help because I think humanity as a culture, we're built to try and survive together. We're we're built to try and help each other out. That's what I think. You know, human. That's that's one of the you know great things about humanity. I think we we are wired to want to connect. Uh, it's why I do think that the current pandemic and everything that's going on, and some of the ways our leaders and social media are manipulating us, is so goddamn dangerous because it's breaking some of those basic things. We're starting to get a generation out there that says, hey, if you vote for you know, the wrong person, it's okay not to help you. Um, it's okay to, you know, you see these articles from elitists who say things like, it's okay to cut off your family, who, uh, you know, you, know you, you have that racist grandpa, it's okay to just, you know, never see him again until he dies. It's okay, because screw him, right? He voted for Trump, screw that guy. I think that's that breaks everything that that is is inherent to our soul. I think it's wrong. Um, you know, I think comics and in YouTube in general, it's built to wind people up, and and in many cases not in a bad way. I mean, comics are designed to get you on the edge of your seat. It's a form of entertainment. Ugh, hyperbole is uh, is in, is you know intrinsically linked to comics. And I think that shows up in a lot of cases. Look, people go into a comic shop and they will passionately fight about uh, who would win between Thor and, uh, I don't know, the Hulk. 
And you see people, and every now and then, I'm sure you've been there, you've thought, man, these people should chill. Like, why are they getting so wrapped up in these fictional characters having a fictional fight? This is, this is stupid. But they're bringing their all to that argument. And I think that's one of the glorious, magical, great things about comics is that we can invest ourselves like that. And I think that the dark side to that, the, the negative to that, is that passion, that getting in that kind of argumentative phase applies to everything. And right now, since we have exposure to, you know, these personalities, we, we really haven't ever had before. Back when Jim Shooter was editor, I mean, he had an easier job of it. He didn't have his staff out there tweeting crazy nonsense and uh, or, you know, his staff, uh, you know, vague tweeting about Jim Shooter getting angry with them at work. Um, you know, we, we interviewed Martha Thomas's and. She talked about doing Dakota North and, you know, and a comics under Shooter and Shooter had canceled the comic. It wasn't performing. And she, she is disappointed, frustrated, wishes that comic could have continued. But you didn't, you didn't hear her talk about how she wished Shooter would die or any of the rest. It, it was a business and people understood that. And with social media and this ability to kind of wind people up, now we have access to these people. These people are out there broadcasting their various feelings around and it's wound everybody more up. So the fight about who would win between Hulk and Thor now translates into, you know, should Vita have a job or, you know, Daniel Cherry, what did he do? Let's examine in this 50 part tweet thread. You know, that's, that's where we're at right now. And I think some of that passion comes out and feels mighty personal because social media for the last 10, 15 years has been telling us, you know, get personal. This thing is designed to be personal. It should feel personal. It should feel very, very close to you. That's that's in, its entire intent. And when you have emotions that raw, some of them are going to be pretty ugly. And some of them do feel eh, sort of racist. Again, you ask for an honest answer. Here's another one. Um, it, it doesn't... What you, what you observed is something I observed. And, and it is true. And I do wonder, you know, some, uh, not sometimes, quite often... In the world of DC, we've got like Chris Conroy over there, Black Label, tweeting kind of crazy, just crazy stuff. Easily, easily, the craziest stuff comes out of him of any editor over at DC. Is it comes out of Conroy, and then you've got Marie Jobbins, and she's in charge of a bunch of people, and arguably it all rolls up to her. So what what's she doing? You know why why is she letting this stuff go on? Why is she letting Conroy just post crazy shit on Twitter? Why? And then, of course, you have Daniel Cherry, and he was brought in to be kind of marketing whiz kid and, and bring global synergies and all those buzzwords that would get people all excited about. Um, and then you have Jim Lee up there as a creative officer who, you know, when Jeff Johns kind of stepped away and Dan Didio stepped away, you know, the, the, the famous statement was, the buck stops here. I'm in charge. Yet, of those four people I mentioned... Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Have I ever seen anything about Conroy? Anybody? I, I never see anything about that. Ever. And that's the easiest, you know, bait of all, if you will. I, like, he posts stuff that just, yikes. Like, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, ditto for Javins. I, I never see anything about Javins. Um, what, what's, you know, what, what's going on there? Where's the criticism there? If you were looking at a pie chart, over the last year or so, of those four people I mentioned, you would have 85% on Cherry. Easy. And, and I mean, seriously, go, go look it up in the videos. And, and the question is, why? I don't know. Some of it, yeah, I'm sure some of it is racism. I'm sure. I'm sure some of it is the fact that Cherry put a bunch of, uh, you know, popular social justice kind of things on Twitter and, and on his LinkedIn. I'm sure that's true. But in fairness, so did Lee, so did Javins. And Conroy, again, is a, I, I mean, that's a cornucopia of insanity there. Um, you know, now Cherry was kind of the new one to the table. And so when he was announced, people all went and looked. And maybe at that point, they, you know, they, they were aware, whereas these other people, it's like nobody bothered to go look them up. I, I don't know. And one thing leads to another. You know, one person, who's this cherry guy who was hired? Here's a video about it. And then 10 people make videos and then 20 people make videos off that and so on. Um, and, and I'm sure that's how it all goes. And I, I, I do believe, again, 
I'm sure you can call me naive. I'm sure I am in a lot of cases, but in my heart, I, I seek to believe the best in humanity. I don't give a shit how that sounds. I don't care how, you know, naive and childish and everything it sounds. Um, that's, that's my choice. I prefer to believe the best in this world of ours. It hurts me when, uh, I, you know, I'm, it hurts me when that kicks me in the face and it does from time to time. Um, you know, I, I, I think we've got a pretty damn good world. Um, or, you know, actually the, the quote that's correct is, uh, they say, what is it? Uh, they say the world is a good and fine place and worth protecting. And I agree with that last part. So all I could say is on the comments, you know, if they're bothering you, don't read them. Thank you for listening to my videos. I hope they bring you some, some happiness. I hope this is an honest answer. You asked me for an honest answer. I hope that uh, you, you've gotten one. And uh, no, I don't think it's as bad as, as it sometimes comes across. I think that's you know, the nature of the platform. And I think a lot of people are wound up. But I also believe this. If all of us, people listening right now, we're in a bar and I'm buying drinks for everyone. We're all having beer. We'd have Democrats there. We'd have Republicans. We'd have straight people. We'd have queer people. We'd have white, brown, uh, all, all different colors, all different experiences and aspects to their life. And um, I think we'd have a pretty damn good time. So, you know, I'm going to hang on to that. Thanks for listening.